good afternoon today uh, we are having a presentation about who approved rapid diagnostics which is a game changer for ntep the who approved molecular tests for drug resistant tb as per complexity they have been divided recently this includes the high complexity test the moderate complexity test and the low complexity test high complexity tests are basically the lpas moderate complexity is tb lamp and abbott uh, real time cobas bd max prototype and low complexity is expert ultra tunat mtp -RIS. looking at ntp which is national tuberculosis program at a glance this is a very overwhelming slide but that's the algorithm in which all presumptive tb or tb patients all non responders they are basically subjected to nat nat is a nucleic acid test which could be a true nat or it could be a cb nat and then based on both of the test either we will get a rifampicin resistant result or detected so let us see what happens to each arm so in case we get rifampicin resistance not detected which means it is sensitive we still send another sample to the culture dst lab for first line lpa so <clears throat> based on first line lpa we know about inh resistance also so in case of inh resistance if it is detected a different regimen is given if it is not detected a different regimen is given so first line lpa basically tells you about rifampicin inh and second line lpa tells you about chloroquinone and aminoglycosan and if inh resistance is detected to flex less testing is done for second line lpa and for also liquid culture and dst and based on this the regimens are started talking about the other arm in which rifampicin resistance is detected we have first line lpa second line lpa and liquid culture dst to pyrazinamide betaclofenoxazamine moxifloxacin linozolid and delamin so again you know in this case based on the rifampicin resistance different test are put and uh, first line lpa and second line lpa will be discussing later and based on these again we will be doing the you know we will be further taking up the different regimens talking about the various test we will first talk about the lowest complexity test easiest test the real time which are very automated which include five different types basically uh, cifid expert ultra omni expert xdr and truna so basically all these are based on multiplex pcr they have multiple targets which can be amplified and detected each target is labeled with different dyes and amplicon is mo monitored and measured by detecting fluorescence uh, so these include the molecular beacon probes target is there no target is there no fluorescence if target is there there is fluorescence and fluorescence detection is measured in case of detection of mutations in rpob gene by expert mtb rif there is rpob gene where you have probe a b c d e there are five overlapping probes and one probe is there which is for sample processing control or bacillus globigii and six other probes dyes are also detected at the same time based on this there is an interpretation so the first is a quality check so at least two probes should be present if no probe is present it is an error in case a probe is in case a probe is present all positives all the probes are positive that means mtb is detected but no rifampicin resistance if one or more are negative and spc is could be negative or positive so you mean uh, to say that mtb is detected and rifampicin resistance is detected so it's a very simple interpretation it is given in a very easy way of green and red red is for anything which is detected and it this is the this is as simple basis and even technician nurse or even a person with very uh, you know very minimalistic training can do this so just to show like you know how one probe here has not hybridized has not given fluorescence and that one is probe negative so it says that rifampicin resistance detected and here also is showing in the uh, module output running cbnat test is fairly very simple when we pour sample regions into the sample tube incubate for 15 minutes pipette diluted sample into cartridges and insert cartridges and start assay as far as ultra or expert are concerned limit of detection is 130 cfu and 16 cfu is ultra 
so it's it's uh, 10 times more uh, you know sensitive it is smear negative extra permanent 2 to 2.5 hours independent module is there cartridge design includes smaller pcr tube expert ultra is larger pcr tube that doubles dna result of tv expert is high medium low very low and in case of ultra it is high medium low very low trace so you even can get the trace result specificity is 98% and even ultra is 94.8% you know people talk about saying that it has a lot of false positives that is not the case there is more false positivity because any test which is very very sensitive will get some more false positivity but it is not so much because it can also discriminate some silent mutations from the true mutations as far as the ultra is concerned again uh, you know this is a cartridge ultra where you can see that there is a 50 ml tube and 25 this is the ultra cartridge so you know this is just to show ki how the cartridge the pcr tube is bigger so it takes more amount of dna and therefore more sensitivity omni was a platform which was developed uh, some time back is not been extremely popular though it's a single cartridge one it's battery operated and it was meant to be kept you know on the table like you know that like literally like you know sitting in opd or something a patient can be tested it has four hours of battery and it has automatic connectivity uh now really people are talking a lot about expert xdr so expert is got a 10 color module where it apart from the it's not prefampicin but for inha using the cat g fab g one oxy r genes inha gene flor jra b and rrs and eis promoter gene right and this versus phenotypic dst it was found to have very good sensitivity and uh, very good specificity but sensitivity for amino glycosides and fluoroquinone is not very high after that comes the tunat tunat in case of tunat we will just put a chip and then it's the same like expert the sensitivity specificity is comparable it is like an expert and uh, you know when you add the dna to the tunat chip you just get the result it's a it's a this machine for just padding the chip and after that the result is obtained both tunat and expert tunat is chip based expert is cartridge based tunat is battery operated expert is continuous power supply in case of tunat the wireless data transfer is there in case of expert it's pen drive so price of the chip is for private sector for the expert it is commercial 1600 rupees and 1236 is i pack they both are there as far as the molecular tb diagnostics is concerned it's a high complexity test which is a molecular genotypic test for nat this is a hybridization test which is you know for dna extraction amplification by pcr and hybridization as far as the genotype plus first line lp is concerned it includes rifampicin inh high level inh low level and ethylamide resistance so when we just coming back to the previous slide again so why do we call it high complexity test because you have to first separately take out dna although many of the tests have been simplified by the manufacturer then you further are going to do amplification by pcr then you are going to have do hybridization by the fact of this lock and key uh, mechanism in which you will find the hybridization and the evaluation will be done based on that which is fairly manual and it can be subjective also so as far as the genotype mtbdr plus first line lp is concerned it gives you an answer to rifampicin cat g and inh and rifampicin is uh, wild type probes uh, which are 8 and mutant probes which are 4 then cat g is wild type is 1 and mutations probes are 2 then inh is wild type 2 and mutation probes are 4 so we have rifampicin we have inh high level and we have inh low level re resistance and ethanomide resistance so uh, the thing is ki uh, the thing is that you know basically the absence of any wild type wild type is naturally occurring so pc left it is a natural one so in case of absence of any hybridization or a presence of any mutant band so this contributes to resistance that is the basic principle for all the lpas first line lpa also called as heinz test is rifampicin inh and uh, so this also tells you about the presence of tb 
So the sensitivity of uh, LPA compared to phenotypic DST for rifampicin is 97.6%, but INS is 83% only. But specificity for both is, you know, about, about 90%. Now, uh, genotype MTB DR SL version 2.0 starting in 2009, which is done subsequently. And in this case, the gyre gene is the one which causes the resistance to fluoroquinones, which is Oflox and Moxiflox. And uh, this one, uh, Oflox and Moxiflox. So this is wild type 3. And we have many mutation probes, which are like 1, 2, 3A, 3B, 3C, 3D. Then we have JIRB, which has again one wild type probe and two mutation probes. Then we have the RRS one, where we have one wild type and you know two mutants, two wild types and mutants. And EIS tells you about low level camelomycin. Now this particular uh, line probe essay tells you about by means of JIRB and JIRB about the fluoroquinone resistance by the means of uh, aminoglycosides and all. It's about RRS and uh, uh, EIS, is low-level canamycin and aminoglycosides. And then JIR A and B, the resistance to fluoroquinone is there. And, uh, you know, again here also, if we talk about it, presence of 3B, 3C, 3D JIR A mutations contributes to the high-level fluoroquinone resistance. Again, the sensitivity is, the specificity is very high. The sensitivity is higher for fluoroquinone in the range of 80%. And in case of second line DSTs, uh, the second line injectables, it's about 75%. Geno Scholar is a new test which has been now approved by WHO, which only uh, tells you about pyrazinamide. And because this is also one of the antibiotics which has been used for the program, so this is, uh, but still to be introduced in the Indian national program. So coming to, uh, you know, synopsis of line probe essays, how is it different from the previous test of expert and CBNAT? It takes five to seven days. The sensitivity is about 10,000 bacilli per ml. Samples are smear positive sputum or culture as well. It's, it's a complex test which is technically demanding. Training is five to seven days. Infrastructure is three separate tuned with BSL-3. Testing pattern is batch testing with high number of samples or culture in three to four days. Then contamination, it is very, very sensitive. Moderate complexity NATS include the WHO and those 2021 test, which is like about real time PCR is PAP, IS6110, PD Max, Hindflow, Roche, Kubas. It's a multi copy test and all. Right? Uh, the test, which is PAP and this one. So, as far as the moderate complexity WHO proof automated NAS is concerned, it is your real time MTB, RIF, INH, SA, Vector and Dickinson, Hind Diagnostic, and Roche. So these four essays basically are have come recently. They have their own individual platforms. They talk about, they tell you about the MTB detected. They tell you about rifampus and INH. Limit of protection is very less, even in some cases, you know, comparable to gene expert or even lesser than gene expert. I mean, like BD Max is claiming to be like six, but more studies needs to be done. More evidence of our country needs to be created before it's introduced in the NTEP. So it's not introduced in the NTEP program but they are being you know, used in the private sector and they're very much recommended. So, you know, these are, and also they are recommended only for the respiratory samples, just some of the way the machines look like. Loop mediated amplification, also called as LAMP, is a simple rapid system, which is starts with mixing of the reagents and all sort of uh, extraction followed by isothermal reaction. It has primers and then there is a hybridization also and a detection is by fluorescence. But the test is not part of NTP algorithm. It has sensitivity which is higher than that of, uh, lesser than that of culture, but higher than that of your, uh, uh, what you say, the microscope. And it's, it's lesser than that of expert also. So it's not become very popular because it does not tell you about rifampicin resistance as well. There are many other uh, molecular tests available currently in the market. They're not approved by WHO. They're undergoing various trials at various stages, such as Gen Drive, EasyNAT, Lateral Flow, then uh, point of care test and others, and RT-PCR. So talking, just we're going to touch, if we have time, we will be able to touch a little bit about the sequencing. 
so when we say next generation sequencing next generation sequencing means it is a sequencing which is talking only about the the other generation means the you know when we when we saying next generation it is like about the uh, fact that you know uh, anything which is going to be telling you about more and more uh, results and also these tests are much more advanced as compared to the previous uh, sequence so it has great potential for rapidly diagnosing in the clinical reference labs it has it can detect the whole genomes the complete sequences it can tell you about the lineage also risk and patterns also relatedness also so as far as the sequencing is concerned the resistance to first line is very confidently true because there is enough data and literature av available of the mapping of these genes for second line also it is there not as much as first line because still genetic basis you know it's still to be known i mean when we are saying second line we mean to say your chloroquinones and amino glycosides predominantly and some others also like you know ethionamide pass and the newer drugs like your tutunomid your lenalidomide your betaquiline delaminate you know it is the data is very very limited so whole genome sequencing is the one which is the where the genome is fully sequenced you find the comprehensive solution limitation is that it has sequencing from the culture it's expensive complicated you know it's very very expensive it is a complicated technique complicated bioinformatics and the process very long and it provides the grading to qualify mutation as basis of resistance as far as the grading is concerned associated with resistance or not associated with resistance uncertain significance and it has data for all first line and most second line so uh, then the second one is the targeted sequences which means you will not be taking the complete genome we will be taking few gene targets predefined targets it's an easier method sequence directly from samples less and fair expensive easier bioinformatics it is faster and then as far as the minion is concerned uh, minion uh, one is concerned it is a nanopore assembly often uh, this one where you can have a lineage strain which is there going to identify novel mutations and then there is a deep amplicon sequence one is deep amplicon one is minion so these two are the ones that's expensive easy bioinformatics and fast molecular test dna microarrays mtb uh, complex dna is detected by i6110 fragment new mutations are responsible for if ampicillin apob uh, inh then uh, by i6110 again you know mutations are there which is for inh8 so these are again different kind of test which is available so uh, because this is just a pre recorded uh, thing i'm not able to i will not be able to answer any questions but you are free to ask me any questions from the contact number which will be provided which has been provided to you thank you so much